Hello and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode, I'll be discussing the 2004 festive comedy Christmas with the Cranks, as directed by Joe Roth and based on the popular 2001 novel Skipping Christmas by none other than John Grisham. The movie follows the mishap adventures of Mr. and Mrs. Crank, Luther and Nora, as played by Tim Allen and Jamie Lee Curtis, respectively. After waving their daughter off, um, Blair, as played by Julie Gon Gonzalo, um, off to join the Peace Corps at Thanksgiving and most probably being uh, away well into the new year. With their daughter gone, presumably not returning um, home for the coming Christmas vacation this year, the Cranks have a brainchild idea, courtesy of Luther, with that being this year, instead of spending over six grand on Christmas as they had done in the past, now it's just the two of them. Why not bank that money and go on a 10 day cruise soaking up some winter sun? The stipulation is, however, that this year for one year they skip Christmas completely no tree, no decorations, no presents, a total and complete boycott of the holiday. This doesn't go down too well with their friends and neighbours who take pretty much a big umbrage to the fact that the Cranks won't be celebrating Christmas in their usual way. That they won't be holding their usual and fabled Christmas Eve party and won't be participating in the neighbourhood's Christmas festivities. However, the tables are turned when Blair calls on Christmas Eve to say she is coming home for the Christmas holidays, bringing none other than her new boyfriend along from Peru uh, to meet her family and experience a big old-fashioned American Christmas. With only hours left before Blair touches down, Luther and Nora frantically clutch every straw they can find and fight across every aisle to put Christmas back on. But of course, um, for anybody who has tried to do any shopping on Christmas at the last minute knows that that is no mean feat. So what are the cranks to do? Now, without sounding like a bit of a bar humbug myself, I mean, I love Christmas as much as the next person. I've dusted off the Christmas hat. I've dusted off the Christmas jumper. Um, our treat and trimmings are pretty much up in the first week of November every year. We love it that much. However, and maybe it's me being British or something. I, I don't know. Um, or perhaps I am just a closet Grinch. I'm not sure. But the premise of this film does kind of perplex me somewhat. I mean, if I had a chance to go on a cruise, or indeed any holiday over the festive period, including Christmas Day, sign me up. Uh, Christmas or not, you know? Um, I mean, their daughter's gone after 23 years, flown the nest. It's time to pull out the party poppers and the champagne, right? Surely. I mean, the expense alone, six, six grand on Christmas. Now that is festive, you know? That would have me reaching for the sun cream in no time if, if I calculated that. But the problem I have then is that the film wants to make us think that the cranks are bar humbug because they choose to abandon Christmas. Luther is unnecessarily made to play out like the Grinch on his mission to boycott the holiday. I mean, after 23 years of hosting Christmas parties, making everything perfect for everybody else, did they not deserve a break? Well, their friends and neighbours just didn't seem to think so. Um, it did seem quite a bit forced in this respect. I think the cranks were treated as lepers for wanting to skip Christmas. Indeed, you must have fun or else. Uh, but I say in this respect, fair play to them, you know, in wanting to kind of de-stress and get away from it all. Luther is a man after my own heart. But then saying that, um, it does totally bamboozle me that why they actually have to have a total boycott of Christmas. I mean, get a tree, get some cards, send some prezzies, you know? Just don't overdo it. Stick to a budget and still have your cruise. That literally makes no sense whatsoever. Um, the, the way it's kind of set out in the film overall, the total boycott of Christmas completely makes no sense. Um, if only to set Luther as a Grinch-like character. But then that is so out of character. Surely, couldn't they have simply reused some of the decorations from last year? Um, some of the Grinchy moments are just totally senseless acts. Indeed, they still had three grand, three grand to play with after factoring in their crews. There's plenty of similarities and inferences made between the Grinch, Scrooge and Mr. Crank. But this is the first Christmas boycott, right? It is his first Christmas boycott, not like the others, right? 
Again, totally bamboozled and not in keeping with somebody who shelled out near to six grand. I'll say that again, six grand for Christmas each year for 23 years. Whew. It all just feels like Christmas is being somewhat forced upon us um, and non-conformance will be punished. But that isn't what Christmas is all about, um, right? Is it? Um, most of it just seems very antagonistic for the sake of being ag antagonistic to me. I've never kind of been really kind of part of that tight-knit community though, so perhaps it's just something I can't understand. On the other side, the characters are fairly decent enough, I mean, for what they are. Not really adding much, which is a shame given the talent involved, if you think about who's involved in this movie. But at the same time, doing their job, at least. You know, they're, they're playing it safe, they're doing it by the numbers, it's a film, get the paycheck, we're off. It is fairly witty in places and, and somewhat comical, again, for what it is. The best comedy being, of course, when the cranks do have to go grovelling to kickstart Crimbo once again. But it can just be a little bit too slapstick at times, you know, when we get round to this point. Some of the actual best moments are just when Luther and Nora are being a normal married couple, making light of some of the moments many of us have had, perhaps, um, in perhaps one form or another. Hiding from your neighbours um, and the Christmas carolers. Now, I'm not saying that that's because of any kind of lack of Christmas spirit, you know, thereof, but fear of possibly getting beaten up, um, house broken into. That, and, you know, I must admit, I, I kind of do get a bit embarrassed, kind of just staring there, listening to some frostbitten little, little tykes, you know, trying to crank out jingle bells. It, it all just feels just a little bit awkward when I'm stood there. Maybe I'm wired wrong. Um, Surely I can't be alone on this. Maybe I am. I do still enjoy the festiveness of it all, you know, forced or otherwise in the movie. I think it just sends out all the wrong signals for what it was really trying to achieve. It is supposed to be just a bit of harmless fun. And, and when perceived in that light, it can still have its moments. It's still a festive movie. It's still got quite a bit of energy about it. And indeed, that Christmas spirit is somewhat malaligned, you know. And surprisingly, um, in one last unexpected and kind of sideswiping moment that almost comes out of nowhere, there is some beautiful sentiment to be had with a pretty powerful gesture as it ends. Even if the messages, is the, you know, the messages that the film had been given throughout were kind of mixed, this one was totally touching. The true spirit of Christmas, and um, one which actually had me welling up at the end. The film had gone somewhere to kind of building up a relationship in the side which really helped the poignancy of the movie create something special here. Shame it just wasn't quite as kind of consistent throughout. Overall, in the end, you know, the, the movie does capture that magical quality of Christmas, you know, that it has in bounds, even if it is perhaps forced from a great height and held against us in fear of being labelled as outcasts. Its messages just aren't consistent, concentrating on the compliance aspects, conformity and commercialisation of the season then it is kind of the gesture of peace and love and goodwill that are at the very heart of the holiday, regardless of where we might choose to spend it. Let's just put it this way. Our son Oliver will be in for a bit of a surprise, I'm telling you, when he gets older and brings his partner home for the holidays and we're in Barbados. Hopefully by then he knows how to cook his own Christmas dinner. So that brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions and other movie related content. Absolutely loved having you here at Sci-Fi's Movie Talk. Definitely love to have you back. Most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.